Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm Rhonda and coming up is a two-part video. In the first part, I'm going to talk about a couple of different yarn fibers that you may not be informed about and I'll let you know the pros and cons. And in the second part, I am going to show you yarn that uses those two fibers, how it works up and what I am making with it. So stick around and I hope this video will be interesting, informative, and offer you some inspiration. Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm Rhonda, so you'll notice that I've put this on and I am making this out of the fiber I'm going to talk about. I'm going to actually show you the yarn that I used to make this poncho discuss my initial reaction of the yarn and talk about the fibers in the yarn. In part two of this video, I'm going to do an overhead demo of me working with the yarn, show you how it works up, uh, how I like working with it, and I'll also give you a small demo of how it is to work up this poncho but again, it was just a small demo and I will link you to the pattern below if you decide to make it, it's all there for you. So as I mentioned, this is a two part video and because of that, I encourage you to watch it over two separate times, but they are linked and that's why I'm doing one video. To make that easy for you, in the description box below, I'm going to link you to specific time stamps for the two different sections of this video so you can easily come back and go to the second part. If you want to watch it all at once because you're enjoying it, hey, that's a compliment to me. So go for it, whatever works for you, but you can watch it over two different sessions or one. And I hope that this gives you some information that will prove to be valuable for you. Okay, so the yarn I used to make this or in the process of making is Yarn B Stitch 101 5050. And it is regular price $5.99 American because I'm Canadian, so I have to mention that. Uh, this was on sale at Hobby Lobby for $1.49, I believe. It was that recent big sale. So there you see the sale price. And I had um, one of my viewers slash friends be so sweet and generous to shop for me at Hobby Lobby and send me a huge portion, generous portion of yarn. This was part of it. Uh, this color is apricot. And I'll just give you the details of this yarn and talk a little bit about the fibers. Because I think that's really interesting. I'm not very familiar with certain fibers. I mean, we all know wool and different varieties of wool and cotton and acrylic, but then there's other things that are synthetic, natural combination. I really don't know, so I have to look it up and I'm gonna share that information with you. So first of all, I will tell you that this is the color apricot and I like it. It's not a color I would generally wear, but I think it's really pretty and I think it's very pretty for the fall. And I really like it in this lighting. I almost think it looks better than real life, but it is a really pretty color. Anyways, this is um, a net weight of 3.5 ounces and it is 180 yards. It is considered a four weight, but I think it's thin for four weight. I probably would classify it more as a three weight. It kind of reminds me of Karen Simply Soft in a way, but not quite. It's just that it has the softness and a bit of the same shininess. Totally different fabric and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, and this one is, it says it's made with US fibers and it is made in Turkey made with fibers manufactured in the United States. So that's pretty interesting. And it is for those of you who go with uh, metric, it's 105 meters and 100 grams. 
the suggested hook size is five millimeter. No, sorry. Suggested hook size is 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. If you knit, it's five millimeter knitting needles. So the washing instructions are, it looks like it is machine washable. And it, these are symbols and I never think that's coming out clearly. I hope you can see that. I'm not really good at reading these symbols. I generally have to look it up, but I do believe that it is machine washable, but I would probably do gentle cycle and I would probably lay flat to dry. That's just me. Um, and I'm going to tell you what I noticed about this fabric in a moment as well, making you wait for everything. Anyways, the fibers of this is 50% acetate and 50% modal. I hope I'm pronouncing modal correctly. And I'm going to tell you a bit about those fibers. But first I'm going to tell you my experience working with this yarn. It's really interesting. I don't know if you can see it here. Actually, I found when I'm working with it, it sheds. And because I wear a lot of black, I notice that there's all this fuzziness when I'm working with it that ends up on my clothes. Now, that being said, I use one of those little rollers because I have a cat and cats shed. So pet owners typically need those rollers of um, plastic lint remover, you know, those lint remover rolls. I happen to have one here, one of these things. Uh, really important. So what I found was with things like cat hair and regular hair, it does weave its way in the fibers and even this doesn't get it off. But for the shedding of this, it came off really easily. But of course, nobody wants their garments to shed. So I'll be interested to see once I wash it. I have a feeling that it's just because it's new fiber and once it goes through the wash, it's going to be just fine. It is really really soft. That much I can tell you. Very soft, very comfortable. And let's look at these fibers. 50% acetate, 50% modal. And I don't know if you know what it is, but I didn't. I'm guessing it's synthetic. So I looked it up. So this is what it says about acetate. And I have it on my iPad here because I want it to be accurate and give you proper information. It says, for whatever it's worth, acetate yarns are textile fibers made from the cellulose acetate. As in the production of viscose, I don't even know what viscose is, the raw material here is cellulose. Textiles made of cellulose acetate fiber look very similar to natural silk and are almost as pleasant to touch. This is also why acetate yarn is known as artificial silk. Well, that makes sense. It does feel silky soft. The other thing I read about it is the positives. It dries quickly. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't pile. So I guess it doesn't get all those little pills on it. And is resistant to moth and mildew stains. Moth is really important to me because I did at one point, thank goodness, I managed to save my yarn. I think from secondhand yarn, I think that's where it came from. I had an infestation of clothing moths in my home and it was nasty. It was traumatic. I had to get an exterminator in the house. I had to freeze all my yarn because of course I couldn't run it through a washing machine. Anything that I've made, I had to wash all my clothes. I had to turn everything upside down. It was really, really stressful. So you don't want things around that moths are going to attack. Um, if you don't get moths in your house, that's fine. I had never seen a moth in my life before this. This happened to me a couple of years ago. Um, and then all of a sudden I see these moths and I had no idea at first what they were. And then I realized I lost a lot of my clothes. They put holes into a lot of my things. It was just bad. It was bad. So to have a fiber that says it's resistant to moths is really, really important. So that's good. And it's artificial silk and it has a really nice drape as you see. Um, so that's acetate. So it is, it seems like it is a synthetic fiber imitation silk and has its advantages. 
In its hardened form, acetate is very easy to process, making it a great and inexpensive material. Okay, so it'll be obviously less expensive than natural silk, which makes sense. Is acetate the same as polyester? Acetate, like rayon, is a funky one. It's sort of natural, but not really. It's a manufactured fiber, like nylon and polyester, but derived from a natural source. Acetate is a cellulosic fiber, which is what I said. What are the advantages and disadvantages of acetate? It is one of the most versatile of fabrics and can resist wrinkling. So that's good. It has a silky look to it and a luxurious feel. The disadvantage of acetate is that the dyes can fade or bleed. It's also heat sensitive and is a relatively weak fiber. You should hand wash acetate garments with warm water and only a light duty detergent. Okay, so there you go. So even though it looks like this is saying to machine wash, it suggests hand washing, but I haven't looked at Modal yet. So that will be the next thing. Maybe Modal gives it its strength. I'm not really sure what to expect yet until I look up Modal. The other thing that's really good thing to know is, is acetate good for summer? It says here, the worst fabrics for summer. Okay. And I was thinking this would be good for summer because it feels so light, but I might have to keep it for the fall. So the best and worst fabrics to wear when it's really, really hot, which is like today. The best fabrics for summer in general, natural fibers, even wool. Really? Okay, that's new to me. I would have never thought of wearing wool in the summer. And natural fibers, even wool, breathe better than synthetics because natural fibers have to withstand fluctuations in weather for the survival of the creature it originates from. I guess that makes sense. There is a close correlation between the fiber's purpose and its breathability. Think about how a silkworm cocoon has to function compared to a lab-borne petrochemical fabric like polyester. Okay, now specific to acetate, let's see what it says. The worst fabrics for summer. The least breathable fabrics include acrylic, nylon, vinyl, polyester, fleece, and other acetates. Oh well, maybe I won't be wearing this in the summer. It's okay because it's a beautiful fall color, right? I could throw it over a top like this and it's pretty. Natural heavyweight knits and wovens along lightweight synthetic knits like nylon, tricotton, polyester, jersey also aren't ideal because air won't easily pass through them. Lastly, wool. Really, performance synthetics like spandex or athletic wear and rayons aren't great options, but they are better than acrylics, nylons, polyester, and fleece. I'll link you to this article. So the bottom line for what to wear in the summer, always choose a light knit like jersey that is 100% bamboo, tensile, lyocell, or silk. So I guess even though it's imitation silk, it's not going to work for the summer. Now, I do want to talk about something else. Natural fibers versus synthetics. Because I've recently come across people who have preferences for natural fibers and would never wear synthetics. They don't want to have them close to their skin. They feel there's maybe a toxicity. It's just not good for you. But then I started looking online um, with dyes and soil and air and water and everything on this planet has a carbon footprint. Everything can be bad for you. I even read that bamboo against your skin is bad for you because it has toxins. So I'm really at the point where I'm confused. And my thing is, if I like a fabric, if I like a yarn, if I think it's pretty, I'm going to use it. I just, that's just the way I feel. Um, I think that even something like wool or cotton, 
um, cotton has pesticides that are used or it has to be organic cotton, which can be incredibly expensive. And then those of us on a tighter budget will get so disheartened by all of this that we may just lose interest in our beautiful craft. So I like to look at the beauty of the fabric, the beauty of the colors, the beauty of the softness. And I try not to get too caught up in what it's made out of because I think most things have advantages and disadvantages. And you can give me your opinions in the comments section below. Let me know what your experience is because I've been recently really looking at this and trying to figure it out. And this is what I've come across, that there's advantages and disadvantages to everything. And even the air we breathe, even the soil where we grow our crops could have toxins. So, we just can't really get away with it unless we grow our own fibers and create our own dyes and grow our own food. We're going to run into something. That's just my feeling and it's my personal thoughts, my opinions, and everybody has their own views and I respect everybody's views. I just find that it's sometimes stressful to think about um, all of the details because it can get really... Um, Anxiety provoking, I guess is the best way I can put it. Uh, but it is good to know what's the best fiber for the summer because, of course, I didn't know this felt soft and silky and I thought this won't make me warm. Now, then again, with something like this, it's got a lot of holes in it, so probably it would be okay, I would think. Um, but I know that some fabrics will absorb moisture and some will repel moisture and so you can look at all those details but anyways this is acetate supposedly not good for hot weather um imitation silk feels soft so with everything i've said you can let me know would you use acetate have you used it do you like it and sorry i'm rambling but there's a lot to be said for the fibers in the yarn that we use. Modell, let's take a look at Modell. So what is Modell fabric? How is it made? And is it an environmentally conscious choice? So let's take a look and see what I can find out about that. So the first thing I'm reading is some call it underwear fabric and some just look to it as an environmentally friendly textile option. That's looking good. Either way, Modal is revolutionizing the fashion industry with its lightweight, stretchy and breathable nature that takes beech tree pulp and turns it into an eco conscious, durable option for clothing and housewares. So it sounds like combining the acetate with the modal might make it acceptable for the warmer weather and might make it a little more natural. So modal is considered semi-synthetic. It's made from beech tree pulp, as I said, that is used primarily for clothing, such as underwear and pajamas, and household items like bed sheets and towels. Modal is a form of rayon, another plant-based textile. Though it is slightly more durable and flexible than the standard version, modal is often blended with other fibers like cotton and spandex for added strength and acetate. So where acetate is weak, the modal comes in and strengthens the fibers. Modal is considered a luxurious textile thanks to both its soft feel and high cost, as it is more expensive than either cotton or viscose. Interesting. So this yarn B Stitch 101 50-50, that 50% modal makes it luxurious. So this circular poncho can be luxurious now. So that makes me feel happy. I like what I'm reading about Modell. Okay, here is something a little more interesting about Modell. How is it manufactured? It is a bio-based fabric that is made from spinning, reconstituted beech tree cellulose. So both acetate and 
Modal are made from cellulose. Modal is generally considered a more eco-friendly alternative to cotton. Wow, that's interesting because beech trees don't require much water to grow and therefore the production process uses about 10 to 20 times less water. I find this interesting. I hope you do too. Even though the material is plant derived, the production process includes soaking the fabric in chemicals like sodium hydroxide and carbon disulfate, which in turn classify modal as semi synthetic. Modal is a type of rayon fabric, but it is generally more durable than regular rayon and feels softer like cotton. 12 benefits to using and wearing modal fabric. It's stretchy. Modal's flexibility makes it ideal for items like t-shirts and athletic wear. So I think it'll give this a nice stretchy feel. It's soft. Modal has an incredible soft touch and is often used for bed sheets, pajamas, and undergarments. It's breathable. Modal is great for sports clothing and everyday clothes because the fabric's weave is very breathable. So again, combining 50-50 acetate and modal. That's a good quantity of modal to compensate for maybe the disadvantages of acetate. Water absorbent. Modal is 50% more absorbent than cotton. Micropores inside the fabric absorb any water, sweat they come into contact with. I'm thinking this might be good for the summer after all. It is durable. Modal is very strong because of the tight weave and the long fibers and is therefore used for garments and housewares that receive regular use. This is looking really good. It drapes well. Similar to rayon and other silk alternatives, Modal has a beautiful drape that makes it ideal for clothing and decoration. It's eco-friendly. Modal is made from regenerative plants and there are fewer chemicals used in the production process than with other types of rayon. It doesn't pill. That's always really important. I hate when clothes pill. Um, the fabric resists pilling and has a smooth finish that makes it ideal for everyday wear and use. Color fast. The fabric absorbs dye in warm water and does not bleed dye during the laundering process. So that's interesting. Acetate bleeds, Modal doesn't bleed. Should be interesting to see what happens with this, but I'm guessing that they create a nice balance. We'll find out with wear and tear. It doesn't shrink. Unlike most forms of rayon, Modal is much less likely to shrink in the wash. Biodegradable, Modal is completely biodegradable, so like a natural fiber, and it doesn't crease. Modal resists wrinkles and will stay smooth with minimal ironing. Are there disadvantages to this? How do you care for it? Wash in cold water, use oxygen-based bleach, hmm. dry on low to medium heat. I still would maybe hand wash or put this in a hand wash cycle. That's just me. What is the difference between Modal and Viscose? This is a really educating article, which again, I'll link you to that as well if you want to read it yourself or have it as a reference. Modal is what's called a high wet modulus rayon, which means it's a type of rayon that's stronger when wet and doesn't lose its shape which is not true for viscose. The production process for Modal is almost exactly the same as that for viscose, but the fibers used in Modal undergo more processing, which makes the final product stronger, lighter, and more breathable. Modal is more environmentally friendly than viscose because lower concentrations of sodium hydroxide are used to make it. It goes into the difference between Modal and Lyocell, but I'm gonna link you to the article because I think I probably shared enough with you. I'm going to check out disadvantages of Modal because this is like pro Modal, this article. Okay, if as if that wasn't enough information and I may go through and weed some out. 17 pros and cons of Modal fabric. That's a lot. I'll try to make it quick. Modal fabric is exceptionally absorbent. That's a pro. Number two, and if you want details, I'll link you to this article as well. The fiber yield per acre from the trees used is higher than cotton. 
Okay. Modal fabric uses less water in other ways as well. It provides a texture that is soft and smooth. Modal fabric can improve other materials. Oh, now this is interesting. I have to read this one. You'll find a mixture of fabrics that use Modal because the nature of this product improves how several other materials operate. It is ideal for hygiene related products, including medical items, because of its high absorbency rate. This material brings out the strengths of cotton when blended to resist shrinking over time while adding strength to the product. Modal even blends with lycra and spandex well to give the stretchable characteristics better flexibility and strength. So I'm guessing it blends with acetate well. You can iron Modal fabric if necessary. Modal fabric dyes well without excessive bleeding. And I told you about that one. This material doesn't rip easily. So durability. The cost of Modal fabric is competitive with other materials. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. The cons. What is not good about Modal? Because so far everything I've read, it's like the super material. More people have allergic reactions to Modal fabric than other textiles. So if you are a skin sensitive person, that's something you should make note of. The durability of Modal fabric is not as good as other materials. Well, I'm finding that conflicting because it said it doesn't rip easily. So let me read this one. Modal fabric is prone to issues with pilling and stretching. Well, the other article said it doesn't pill. You'll want to hand wash your items made with this textile to avoid significant changes to the structure of the material. This disadvantage can also lead to runs in the fabric if you catch it with a sharp fingernail. The other one said it doesn't rip. I guess only experimentation will tell them. This is why things get confusing and stressful because there's always going to be different information depending on who you speak to, which articles you read. There is no guarantee of sustainable practices with Modal fabric. You might need to dry clean your material. It does not retain a lot of body heat. Modal fabric tends to turn yellow when exposed to too much heat. Several chemicals are used to create Modal fabric. There may be issues with mislabeling with this material. Conclusions. Okay, let's do the conclusions. Whether you decide to classify Modal fabric as a natural material or a synthetic option, you'll find that the pros and cons of using it generally lean toward the positive side of things. Once the small fibers are created from the trees, they're woven together to convert that pulp into a usable textile with the rayon fabric. The goal is to leave the smallest carbon footprint possible with this product, and the manufacturers are doing an excellent job of reaching that goal. I like that. So, wow, that was too much information. I hope that you found it interesting because to me it's educating. When I go and buy my yarn and when I read what my yarn is made of, that is really beneficial to know. And it's definitely an educating process. So I'm happy to find out. I'm happy I can share it with you. I'm happy that I looked at it and learned. So we're learning together. And you can, again, give me your thoughts below. And if you like the information I gave you, give me a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, let me know. Okay. I'm sorry. That was long. But let's take a look at this now. I'm going to link you to the pattern. It's really not hard. It's a circular poncho. And I'm not done yet, so it's still short. But the interesting thing about this pattern is that it's got a two or a repeat, but it doesn't say that in the pattern. It just gives you the same instructions every other row, which is, I don't know why they do that because to me, it's just like, okay, repeat rows one and two or five and six or whatever it is. And what I like about this is that I can make it as long as I want. And once I've got the length I want with this two row repeat, I can create the bottom edge, which is similar to the top edge and this middle detailing here, which is really pretty. I'm going to bring it up close. I love the scalloped edges on it. I like how it goes out like this. It's really pretty. It's comfortable on, and I think it can accentuate any outfit. Um, in the pattern, it shows a yarn that is a gradient maybe or self-striping it looks really pretty 
but this is what I had and I wanted to use it and I think it looks really nice with the black and um, it's not a color like I said that I normally wear and this is not a style I normally wear but I do think it's pretty so I'm hoping that I can not be self-conscious because maybe I don't show it well here but I am self-conscious I'm really self-conscious sometimes um, yeah so like I put on some weight from COVID and I've been very self-conscious but anyways so let me show you how this yarn works up. So I'm just going to go overhead and show you a little bit of this pattern and how this yarn works up. I find it pretty easy to work with. It's a little bit splitty like Caron Simply Soft, but not horrible. And I find it pretty nice to work with, but I'll show you that now. So let's take a look. Okay, so this pattern is done in the circular. So it's basically a chain of 141, I believe it starts with. It's a one size fits all. And you join the chain and you start working in the circular. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's all done in the circular like that. And a bit about this yarn. It did take a bit of work to find that center pull. I had a clump come out, but once it does, it's great. Uh, it's easy to work with. It doesn't tangle. So I enjoyed that. And I'm going to get to the point where I left off because it's in the circular. Each round increases and increases and it starts to feel like a lot, but I'm right now at the point where I'm doing the two row repeat, which if you can see here, you get this part which has more detailing at the top and in the center. And then the first two parts of this really large mesh pattern, you can see you've got a triple crochet here and double triple crochet in the next one and then you're going from three to two to three to two to three to two and that's how you continue the pattern so basically this is a pattern that comprises mostly of chain five and triple crochets so really fairly easy to work up especially once you get to the two row repeat it's really easy you can sit there and not think about it you don't have to look at the pattern and you just keep trying it on until you like the length and you then make the bottom because i know by looking at the pattern that it's going to have an edge probably similar to this and you're done so let me show you what this fabric looks like and how it works up so you might already see that it is sort of splitty. It's not tightly woven. I am using a four millimeter hook with this yarn. And so I've just completed two triple crochets in the triple crochet below and then a single triple crochet. So I'm basically working off of the triple crochets from below. And again, don't worry, you're not expected to know how to do this. I'm going to link you to the pattern. Basically, I'm just doing this to show you how this yarn works up um, and to just give you some idea of this pattern if you like what the poncho looks like and want to try it. So now I'm at the point where I'm chaining five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then I am going into the two triple crochets below. I'm making two triple crochets in the first stitch. And it is a bit sloppy sometimes. It's loose because you're working with triple crochets in large spaces. So sometimes it gets a little bit um, weird. <laughs> and I just have to pull it out and start again just because the loops on my hook tend to twist up but and I just did that wrong because I'm supposed to put my second triple crochet in the same stitch if you 
you heard that jingling that was my bracelet and I just took it off because that's annoying so I'm sorry about that so two triple crochets in the first stitch and then one triple crochet in the next and you can see it's working up really nicely no problems chain five and then repeating the same process so two triple crochets and then a single triple crochet in the next stitch there is a chain one below that I'm skipping over I'm not worrying about that and then another chain five and so I repeat that and that's all I'm doing for that entire round so when I get to the end of this round I just join it up and I'll show you what, how I do that and then the second round is these two triple crochets so it goes from three to two to three to two with the five chains in between and you get this lovely pattern so I'll just skip ahead and show you how I join it up and then I'll show you the second part of this two round repeat okay something else I wanted to mention with this yarn is that it's really easy to frog you can see it comes out really easily so I'm just going to get back to the end here since I frogged that out to show you and again this isn't going through the whole tutorial of this it's just showing you the two pattern repeat if you would like to do this pattern then I'm going to link you to it and it's pretty straightforward okay so I've so I've got my chain five and now I'm going to do my two treble crochets in this stitch so just in case you're not sure about a treble crochet you wrap your yarn around your hook twice like so and insert your hook into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two and you do that twice in this first stitch with this round so I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to do one more in this second stitch of the treble crochet below like that so now you'll see here that I am ready to finish off this particular row you can see where I started here so I'm going to do my last chain five one two three four five so you'll see over here I did the two trebles and the single treble I'm going to join into that first treble just with a slip stitch like so and I'm ready to start the second round of this two round repeat so I'm going to chain one and this again is really an easy round you do a treble crochet in the first stitch and then you do a chain one and another treble crochet so instead of having the three treble posts you're going to have two just like you see below here okay and you'll notice with this round which is the seam you're going to have that chain one so you see the seam a little bit but it's really not all that noticeable so I've chained one and now I'm going to do my treble crochet in this first stitch and a chain one and another treble crochet into that second treble crochet below whoops so sometimes that happens but that's all cool I just do it over again there you go so you can see the two just like below and then chain five one two three four and five and 
it will be easier to see on this one because the stitches are more well separated. So I'm going to do a treble crochet into that first stitch like so. Chain one and another treble into that third treble below like that. See that? Very simple. This is a really no-brainer type of pattern once you get started and once you get on these two row repeats it's very simple and just something you don't have to think a lot about. It's really easy. So again I'm chaining five and doing that. I'll show you one more time. A treble in that first stitch. Chain one and a treble in the third stitch. So it looks like this. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and one more time. Treble in the first stitch. Chain one and a treble in the third. And that's it really easy. So I'm going to link you to that pattern if you want to try it, but that is the majority of this pattern doing those repeated rows over and over and over again. And the only difference is the starting few rows at the beginning where you do this beautiful edging here and you could see that scalloped edging, which I really like. And similar in this part here, which which is like this is the yoke of the poncho, if that makes sense, just this portion here. And when you look at the pattern that I'm going to link you to, you'll see what I mean. The rest of it goes down as far as you want. It gives you a number of rows, but I'm just going to do it for as many rows as I feel comfortable with. And then you do another bottom edging, which is probably similar to this. I haven't done it yet. And so an easy to follow pattern. And like I said, the only... Uh, difference is that instead of mentioning to do a repeat with the two rows, it just keeps going over them and over them and just being very repetitive, which might be unnecessary, but maybe some people like it that way. So again, with this yarn, with the acetate, the modal, I hope that gave you some understanding of those two different types of fibers. And also, um, if you're thinking of buying this yarn, I would say, yeah, go ahead and buy it. Um, it comes in a variety of colors. There you go, I'm off the camera here. And um, it's nice and soft. And the idea that the two different materials are mixed together probably makes it okay for wearing in the warm weather or cold weather. Um, but you know, until you try it, you just don't know. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you like this. And again, if you did, let me know, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would do that. And also hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button. Um, and that way you'll see all of my videos. And sometimes I have more and sometimes I have less depending on what I have in my mind. Um, Sometimes if I don't have some valuable content for you, I'm just going to leave a little bit of time in between and hopefully what I do offer you is going to be helpful and interesting. So that's it for now. Have a great day. Have a great evening and enjoy your crocheting and hopefully I will come back soon with more interesting content that you can enjoy. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.